What's up guys, Mustang Matt here, and today I am back in Forza Horizon 4 after a long hiatus. I am currently driving a 2018 Ford Mustang GT, modeled to be as close to my personal car that I actually own, uh, as accurately as I can possibly do in Forza. Uh, there's some things that I have on my real car that I can't do in Forza, and vice versa. So, I can only do the splitter with the canards, and I don't have canards. So, go over a little bit that, uh, of that later on, stick with me. But today, I want to make this video primarily about Forza Horizon 4 two years later. Um, I know I'm a little bit late for this, um, I'm a few months late for this video, but better late than never, right? So, Forza Horizon 4, two years later. Let me hear some of you guys' thoughts in the comments section down below. Uh, I'm curious what everybody thinks about it, uh, how it's aged, uh, if it's been doing good, or if, if you think it's lacking a lot. I still think it's a very good game, but it's, it's definitely got some areas of improvement. The first thing is the map. The map was, while the map is beautiful, the, the graphics are stunning. I'm, I'm playing it in 4K right now on my PC. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely stunning. The shadows are, are brilliant, the, the reflections are brilliant, the clarity is, is magnificent, the trees and all the little details, it looks pretty spectacular. But as far as like what's on the map, so there's, there's certain things that, that I would like to see more of and there are certain things that I would like to see less of. This map has a lot of open space. So it, while it's very big, it has a lot of kind of like just dead space. Like this area here, I mean, if if you're off-roading, don't get me wrong, it's great. Um, if you're really into the Forza off-roading scene, which a lot of people are, um, then it's great. But there's also, I mean, there's a lot of area like this that you can't just really use because of like the tree cover. It makes it really hard to off-road because you can't go very fast or anything. It's not like you can really do too much with it other than kind of drive around through the trees. Um, same thing over here, I mean, the Great Ridge. Like, okay, that's great, but ridges get kind of boring. So, you know, after the first few passes, they get a little bit boring. And then the forest over here, again, can't go fast through it, you hit a tree. Forza isn't really modeled to like have some slow off-roading, like mudding or rock crawling. It's not really modeled for that, so in my opinion, it just doesn't work out that great. In my opinion, to me, the best, one of the best Forza maps, the Forza Horizon maps anyway, um, one of the best Forza Horizon maps is Horizon 2. It was expansive, but not too big. It had straight highways. There's no highway in this to, to like really top speed. I mean, you have this one that kind of runs north to south-ish on the map. But it has a lot of little squigglies in it. The whole thing curves in a sense, you know, in, in general. And it's just, it's not as good for top speed runs as that Horizon 2, Horizon 3 map with those really, really long, straight, very wide highways. The other thing is some of the arenas that, though, that Horizon 2 specifically had. You had the airport that was massive. Um, you had the the little um, the little port area that I drifted in for countless hours. Uh, both areas are great for multiplayer events, and both areas were great for drifting. Um, the airport was amazing for top speed and drag cars because you had different speed traps set at different points. You had, if I remember correctly, and, and I've, I've, it's been a while since I've played Horizon Two. But there was kind of like there was like a quarter mile uh, speed trap, and then there was a um, one mile speed trap. So you could do really either or. Um, you could really clock your car really well, and they kind of they really focus on the graphics, and I feel they focus less on just the general like content of the map. The other thing is the car sounds, and this this is one that I've heard harped on a lot. The car sounds are so repetitive and boring. That's not what a Mustang sounds like. Like, that's not what my car sounds like. And 
just doesn't sound much like a coyote, much less a Gen 3 coyote. So the car sounds are very, get they get so repetitive um, and they get a little more. Just kind of boring. And bear in mind, this is a car with full exhaust. Teaser to my real car, but this is full exhaust mods on this car. There's that, I mean, there's there's plenty of other examples of, of car sounds. I can go to the house and, and get a different car out and show you. But a lot of the cars, let's see, where are my cars? So a lot of my cars just, they sound a lot the same. Um, let's see, let's go from this to, why don't we go to a different Ford? For example, we'll see how see how similar the sound is between this one and a different Ford. Okay, so we're back in this GT350R. Um, this is a wicked car. I would love to own one of these one day. This thing is amazing. The body lines are just so different. Different sounds, but again, if you're really into Mustangs specifically, you're gonna know that the sound is not really on par and while it's different from the coyote with full exhaust um this voodoo still doesn't sound quite voodoo-ish it sounds like a tweaked version of the sound they used on the other car rather than an entirely different motor that's flat plane crank and 5.2 liters compared to a 5 liter cross plane crank coyote engine so that's just one of the things that that I have noticed the entire time I've played this game. Again, this isn't like a two years later thing. This is just a very general thing. But as far as the longevity of the game, it it takes away from the longevity of it. When, when you have these really boring, repetitive things like that, it takes away from the longevity. So it, it doesn't. It makes it get boring. People stop playing it. It just hurts that that overall lifespan of the game. Two years later, and this game, I mean, it. There are those things that I've talked about, but in general, I think the game is aged very well. There hasn't really been any other games that came out that I think can even compete with this. If you like open world, this is it. I mean, you can go anywhere on the map, um, with the exception of you know a boat driving in the water or a plane driving in the sky. For that, but you can go anywhere in the map. I mean, it's there's certain walls that restrict you, but once you get around them, it's it's not like it's going to restrict you from you know driving this GT350 up and off of a mountain. So it's and as far as open world goes, it's very very unrestricted. I just wish there were some other areas to explore. Um, the handling physics of the game are phenomenal. They're they're arcade, but they're not too arcadey if that makes any possible sense. Once you pick it up and start playing, you can get used to it. Again, no restriction. Just throw a GT350R off of that. So that's definitely one of the positives, um, you know, about this game two years later, as far as it lasting that long. I think it has, and, but I think we're due for a refresh. Let me know your thoughts. If there's anything else you think about Horizon 4 two years later, as far as how long it's lasted, let me know your thoughts again. I, you know, I I like expressing my opinions about the games and hearing your opinions as well, whether or not they're the same or different than mine, um, and then you know, discussing the reason behind those things. Because we all have different things we prefer. We all have different likes in the game. I like muscle cars in this game. I like drag racing. Um, I love drifting, and a lot of people like off-roading and stuff. So. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.